Right, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, diodes and rectification. So this is still in the topic of action and use of circuit components. In the first video I was looking at uh, the potential divider circuit and its applications. Now diodes have a low resistance to current flow in one direction and a high resistance in the opposite direction. Now if you look at this circuit here below, uh, we, that's the symbol for a diode. So it looks like an arrowhead and then this side is the uh, side that is very high resistance and this side is the side that is with low resistance. So when you connect it in a circuit, make sure that the positive terminal is connected to this side here. So it has very low resistance in this direction causing this bulb to light. When a diode has been con uh, connected in reverse bias mode, that is with this positive on this side here, then it is in reverse bias mode, this bulb will not light because it is very high resistance, they do not allow current to pass through this uh, barrier. So this is called the forward bias mode and this one is called the reverse bias mode. In practical diodes, you find that most of them are black and silver. The black part will be this part here and the silver part will show you that. So you cannot connect the silver part first. You've got to connect the black uh, part uh, first, then the silver. So like I said, the arrowhead in the symbol for the diode points the same way as conventional direction of current. Diodes can be used to change AC to DC, that is alternating current to direct current. Now when we looked at the topic on transformers, we said we can step down or step up the voltage, the alternating current, that is, we can do that. And then after stepping it down, suppose it's from the main supply, you want to uh, plug in your charger from the main supply through a transformer you step it down you get a voltage that is lower but it's still ac but suppose your gadget uses dc eg a charger for a um, for a phone then you need this diode to be connected so the diode then converts the ac to dc the process of changing ac to dc is called rectification right and the diodes that do this uh, rectification are called rectifiers. If an alternating voltage is applied across the diode, during the positive half cycle, the diode will conduct passing current. So let's look at this. You have uh, in the input there, it's an alternating voltage that is positive, negative, positive, negative. So every half cycle, the current changes direction current changes direction. Then when it passes through the, the diode, it changes because for the first part it is conducting, the second part is now reverse biased, so it won't be conducting. Then the third uh, it will be conducting, fourth won't be conducting, so forth and so on. So effectively we have blocked whatever was uh, in the negative. So the negative half cycle will be blocked throughout and you only remain with the positive side. So what we have created there is a, a, a direct current signal. TVs, radios, computers, CD players, and battery chargers for cell phones and car batteries, they run on from the main supply, which is AC, but have transformers in them to step down the voltage and uh, rectifiers then to change the AC to DC. So like I said, you need a transformer to step down the voltage and then you need a diode to change from AC to DC. Now, like I said, this is called half wave rectification. Only half of the signal has been rectified. Full wave rectification can be achieved when you connect a bridge rectifier. That is when you connect two diodes uh, uh, facing up, that is one diode up, one diode down, and then other two diodes facing down. So we have four diodes connected in a bridge 
uh, circuit to form a full wave rectifier. So in that case, this part here will be converted to a positive. So we have positive throughout. So positive, positive, positive throughout. So uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to show that. Now let's end the video by looking at questions. These questions relate to action and use of circuit components, the whole topic on that. So the first question, it says, complete the following table showing the readings of a digital voltmeter of infinite resistance for the output voltage for a series of different resistances and input voltages. So if you have an input voltage of 12, R1 is 100K, R2 is 200K, what is the output volt? So first of all, you look at which resistor has been connected to give you the output. So which means this, in order for you to get a high output, the value of this resistor will be large. Okay, the value of the resistor will be large. So in this case, R2 is greater than R1. So we have R2 over R1 plus R2 times the input voltage. So it will be 200 over 300 times 12, so which is two-thirds of 12. Then for this one, it will be 10 over 35 times 6, which is, yes, 10 over 35 times 6. That will be output voltage. This one will be 20 over 25 times 24. That will get your output voltage. And this one, 100 over 350 times 6 to get that. Next question. Resistor R1 is replaced by a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. If the values of the resistance R2 and the thermistor are equal at start, what, what will happen to the output potential difference as the thermistor is cooled? So at first, we have both having the same resistance, so which means it's 1 over 2. The ratio is 1. 1 is to 1, in other words. So the output voltage will be 1 over 2. That is 1 plus 1, 2 on the denominator. So times uh, V0, the, which is V0. Then that will be uh, that will be V0 over 2 coming out. Now as the thermistor starts cooling off, remember the resistance of the thermistor will start to increase. Remember its resistance increases as the temperature decreases. So as this resistance increases, which means the potential difference across it will start to increase as well, thereby uh, diminishing this uh, output voltage. So this output voltage uh, decreases as the thermistor cools. The thermistor is now replaced by an LDR. What happens to the output potential difference V? is the light intensity of the LDR is increased. So the same thing, we have an LDR now. An LDR's resistance decreases as light intensity increases. So it means at all that the light intensity is increased, so its resistance starts to decrease. Now we have got more output voltage uh, across R2 in that case. Then the last one says, assuming that the voltmeter used uh, to measure V in question 4 has an almost infinite resistance, what happens to the current through R2 as the light intensity falling on the LDR is increased? So if you, you have an infinite uh, so yes, we want to we connect a voltmeter here. If you have an infinite uh, resistance of the voltmeter, it means that it does not draw any current to itself. And the resistance, uh, let's see, this is the resist values of R2 and R1. So R2, right? Now, assuming that the voltmeter used to measure V in question four, is almost infinite resistance. What happens to the current through R2 as the light intensity falls? 
so what happens with the current they're asking about the current so which means that the current if we connect a voltmeter there and that voltmeter is an infinite resistance it means it does not draw any current from the circuit so the current in the circuit remains with the same value that it had so it means no current branches off to go to the voltmeter there it just measures the resistance the, the current flowing in the circuit i think that marks the end of this video uh, please if you do not understand any part of the video uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments and i'll be happy to assist signing out